what I have here is essentially just a big long list. And I'm not going to go into all of them, but I will make some, make some comments uh, that are uh, appropriate to a few of them. The idea for uh, throwing these at you is that, um, as I said, the, the key to software design is having experience. Experience means being aware of possible solutions. And here's a catalog of solutions that have been applied in certain circumstances in the past. In the KWIC quick exercise that you uh, undertook, you saw the abstract data type uh, architectural style as, did the, as you did the batch sequential one. Blackboard architecture is one in which the various components post their results and their requests on some kind of common data repository and the other components look at the repository and see if there's anything they can react to. The fourth one here, the big ball of mud, is not really an architectural style. It's an absence of one. It usually arises uh, because of the process of architectural erosion or because the team didn't even have uh, an architectural design process in the first place. We also already have mentioned client-server. We'll talk about component-based systems uh, later in the, in the course. This use of the term component is somewhat different than the one we've been using in this particular lesson, uh, but um, uh, we'll make that clear when we get to it. You may not have heard about coroutines, so I want to take, take a second to mention that. With subprograms or subroutines, we mentioned that there's this asymmetric relationship. There's a caller and a callee. With coroutines, it's a symmetric relation. Okay, A can call B, and B can call A. Okay? Moreover, if uh, A calls B for a second time, B continues from the point that it was last at when it returned from the first call. These are called coroutines. Uh, a primary example of coroutines, think about uh, printing out formatted data. With printing out formatted data such as with printf, typically you have a, uh, a list of formatting information and a list of data items. And you, the implementation proceeds by uh, uh, taking a, the first uh, formatting information and the first data item and connecting them together, then getting the second uh, formatting uh, information and the second data item. And there may be some uh, loops involved some uh, formatting information may allow for multiple occurrences. Moreover, uh, the data provided may be in the form of a loop. So we're really going back and forth between these two streams of information. And a coroutine is a perfect, uh, a perfect style for uh, dealing with that kind of situation. If you've got uh, a SQL database uh, and you've got some experience with this, you know that uh, you can include in your standard SQL some other functions that you've written. If you do that, uh, sometimes the architectural style is called data-centric. That is, you're using stored database procedures. In this course, we won't be getting into domain modeling very much, uh, but there is an architectural style called domain-driven design. And here, by a domain, we mean a kind of application program. So think about, for example, tax processing software. With tax processing software, there's certain uh, vocabulary that everybody's familiar with, such as deductions, and there are uh, typical ways of solving problems. So if you've ever uh, used your TurboTax or other uh, uh, tax preparation software, you know if you change something over here, other things will get changed automatically for you. That style of data flow uh, updates um, is inherently part of the tax preparation software application domain. And so uh, by uh, organizing your tax preparation software using this particular uh, domain uh, architectural style, once again, you can save yourself uh, effort. We're going to be looking more extensively at implicit invocation. Uh, and also in the Garland and Shaw book that's listed on the resources page, there's a very nice section that talks about all the possible options for implicit invocation architectural style. Another very popular one is layered architectures in which um, each uh, layer in the system acts as a virtual machine providing capabilities to the layers above it. 